everybody. Okay, some sporting memories quiz this Saturday evening. We've got a new uh, theme going on today. And this theme, I'm going to look at different dates. I'm going to start back in time a little way and then work my way back to present time. So I've decided to go back. I know it sounds a little way off, 1960. And you might think, crikey, that's a long time ago. I don't remember 1960. Well, that's true, neither do I. But you might remember your dad talking about it, or your mum, or your granddad mentioning something, which I do. And when I wrote these questions out, quite a few of them are from what either my dad or my granddad spoke about, which is why it's become a sporting memory for me. I didn't live through it, but I remember it through them reminiscing about it. So what we're going to do, I do 1960 this weekend, and then we'll push, say, five years ahead. We'll do 65, then we'll do 70, 75. And we'll look at all different sports, as we usually do, and try and uh, weed out some good memories. So 1960, uh, President, the US president at the time was Dwight Eisenhower, and uh, JFK was running for president that year. Clark Gable died that same year as well. And uh, usual 15 questions. So if you're ready with your pen and paper, shall we start? So number one is for all you boxing fans. In June 1960, who became the first heavyweight to regain a lost world title? The first one to do that. Who was that fighter? In June 1960, who became the first heavyweight to regain a lost world title? Obviously, it's happened since then, but at the time, that had not been done before. Who was that? Who was that boxer? Number one. Number two. In July of 1960, which solo Atlantic sailor sailed into New York in Gypsy Moth Two, setting a new um, record of 40 days for the crossing? It's a well-known name. You'll probably know him for something. Um, that he did after this, but at the time, who was a sailor who set a new record for crossing um, in the Gypsy Moth 2 um, when he sailed into New York? Number three, a little bit easier this one. In what city were the Summer Olympic Games held in 1960? Where were the Summer Olympic Games held back in 1960? or any particular memories or standout people you might remember from that those Olympics. So following on from that theme of the Olympic Games, in what sport did the 19-year-old Huddersfield Clark, Anita Lonsborough, who became Anita Porter, what did she win a gold medal in? What sport? In what sport did the 19-year-old Huddersfield Clark, Anita Lonsborough, who was then became Porter, in what sport did she win an Olympic gold? That's number four. So obviously quite a famous name at the time. You may have heard of that name since. Number five, staying with the Olympics. The only British man to win a gold medal at the 1960 Olympic Games was Don Thompson. And what sport did he compete in? So this time we're looking at the only man to win a gold. Don Thompson, what was the sport in which he competed to take home Olympic gold? Okay, so number six, moving on to football. So what do you remember the FA Cup final, May 1960? We had a whopping attendance of 98,954 people. But what team came out on top that day? with a 3-0 victory. I'll give you a clue, they beat Blackburn Rovers. So the answer obviously isn't Blackburn Rovers. May 1960, FA Cup final, who won 3-0? Who were some of the greats of the 50s and the 60s? Staying with football, and that coveted award, the Ballon d'Or. In 1960, the Ballon d'Or was won by a certain Luis Suarez, Luis Suarez. No, not the Liverpool one, or the one who used to play for Liverpool, a different one. So Luis Suarez, 
a Spanish footballer. He was playing for Barcelona at the time. One year later, he became the world's most expensive footballer, selling for 250 million lira, which is about 142,000 pounds. What club bought him? So that was Luis Suarez, a different one to the one you're thinking of. He was a Spanish footballer for Barcelona, but who came in to buy him, making him the, at the time the world's most expensive footballer? Where did he end up after Barcelona? Number eight, tennis. At the first Grand Slam tennis tournament of the year, 1960, in Australia, which famous Australian players went on to win the men's and the women's singles title? So I'm looking for two answers here. Men's single title, women's single title. Both very famous names in the world of tennis. Who were they? Who were the winners in the Australian um, Open, the Grand Slam? Number nine. In the 1959-60 football season, which football division were Grimsby Town playing in? In the 1959-60 season, which football division were Grimsby Town playing in? So remember, we didn't have a premiership, did we? It was division one, two, three and four, then non-league. So out of those four divisions, which one were Grimsby in? So a bit easier, that one. Number 10, interesting one. The 1960 Grand National had a first. What was it? The 1960 Grand, 1960 Grand National had a first. What was the first? What was happening then that had never happened before? Number 11. Which golfing legend won both the Masters and the US Open in 1960? Shall I give you a clue? His nickname was The King. It's a good nickname, isn't it? The King. That's your, that's your clue for number 11. Number 12. 1960 also saw the Winter Olympics take place in February that year. What was the chosen location of these Winter Games? So, I'll, if you get the country, then I'll let you have it. If you get the location in the country then you're doing really well. The 1960 Winter Games. Number 13, staying with the Winter Games. How many gold medals did Britain win at the 1960 Winter Olympics? How many gold medals did Britain win? That's number 13. And number 14, a bit of football now. Which European club side won the European Cup final in 1960 with a record win? Of seven goals to three. Who was that European Cup winning side? It was played at Hampton Park. But who won 7 3 in the European Cup final? And finally, number 15. In Test cricket, which country toured England in 1960 playing a five match Test series which England won 3 0? Yes, we won it 3-0, but who was that team? Who was that country that was touring in 1960? So that wraps up all 15 questions. Hope it's triggered a few memories. It's probably getting you scratching your head a bit, to be fair, on some of those. Not the easiest. So what I'll do tomorrow is I'll go through the question again briefly, give you the answer and a little bit of background as well. So it'll just start to paint a bit of a picture and you'll probably get a lot of those moments where you'll go oh yeah I remember that so until tomorrow bye bye for now